making a Stuart model steam plant part 19, starting the necessary work on the Stuart 10 V steam engine. When I first had a cursory glance at this engine, everything looked to be OK, but unfortunately there are several problems. I need to turn around the steam and exhaust connections so they're pointing in the right direction. I have another double ten steam engine sent to me by the same customer in the USA. That one is particularly nasty and the exhaust and inlet connections are not made right. The arrangement that you see on the screen is how the exhaust and inlet connections are supposed to be fastened into the engine with a double flange system. One of the reasons for this design is so that you can fit the cylinder cladding without butchering it to go around the exhaust flange. Building a Stuart Double Ten V, in my opinion, is a very fiddly job, and I think that the reason that a lot of builders make it so that the exhaust flanges are bolted to the cylinder is just an exercise in saving time. Although, in the long run, it's better to make these parts. What I'm currently looking at appears to be a factory machine kit assembled by my customer in the USA. I may be wrong about this, but that's the way it looks to me. A lot of the parts are not finished very well. For instance, the surfaces of the flanges on the exhaust and inlet pipes needed cleaning up using emery cloth first, followed by wet and dry sandpaper, and now they look a good bit better. Leveling off the flanges is very important, because the gaskets will not be sufficient to seal the joints, and you won't notice any leaks until you steam the engine. In this clip, I'm removing the cylinder drain cocks, all four of them. These will be refitted only when the cladding is fully finished and in place. Removing the threaded flanges was very easy. I started off the job using a pair of circlip pliers, then I could simply unscrew them from the cylinder block by hand. The quality of the machining on this kit is very good indeed. Once I'd removed the piping from one side of the cylinder block, I turned my attention to the other side, using the same principle, slacken off the nut and bolt, and then spin off the nuts with my scriber point. But there's always one, and guess what, this was the last one, and I couldn't spin off the nut, I had to spanner it off all the way. But eventually the nut dropped off the bolt. The flanges on the steam inlet pipes were not tight at all, and I simply removed them by hand. What I found slightly odd was, on the steam chests was this sealant, and I really am puzzled why it was smeared all over the steam chest, because it's serving no purpose. Anyway, it will come off later. In no time at all, both of the threaded steam inlet flanges were removed. In one of the boxes of bits, I found these, two pieces of cylinder cladding. I'm not sure why they weren't fitted to the engine, they were in a box, but anyway, I'm going to fit them. The holes on the cladding line up perfectly with the holes in the cylinder block, all of them. But unfortunately, the width of the cladding from top to bottom is a little bit too much. So you can't get it to wrap around the cylinder because it's fouling the cylinder cover. This clip has nothing to do with the job. I just thought it would show that it's possible to fit the steam inlet directly to the steam chest. When I show the cladding on the exhaust side of the engine, you can clearly see the reason for using a threaded second flange. This clip also shows that this piece of cladding is not trimmed correctly. But by very carefully using my belt sander, I'm going to trim it so it fits perfectly. Once I trimmed the cladding, I temporarily fitted all of it to the engine using a variety of small 6BA bolts that I have. And as you can clearly see, the cladding is definitely a better fit than it was. Temporarily I left the cladding in place, but I will be removing it in order to rub down both of the parts and repaint them. These pieces of aluminium cladding are currently anodized, and once I rub down the anodized coating it will give a really good key for the new paint. I thought it would be a good idea to have a look at some ideas for mounting this double ten V on the baseboard. It is currently screwed to a piece of softwood, I'm not going to use this because it's all split. I'm thinking about making a brick plinth using doll's house bricks like this, but I'm not sure yet. Before I mount the engine in place on the baseboard, I need to make sure that its steam connections are in the same place to match the ones on the condenser oil trap economizer. 
This slot headed grub screw has to go. I really hate slot headed grub screws because they break all the time. They can only work properly if the slot head is below the surface of the metal for reinforcement. But I still don't like them, so I've removed the flywheel and I've removed the grub screw and thrown it away. In this clip, I'm re threading the hole 4BA, which is a little bit bigger, and then I'm using a 4BA grub screw, a proper one, which is a bit long. I shortened it, then I fitted it in place. I know that I need to shorten it a bit more, but I'll do that in the fullness of time. But for the moment, it holds the flywheel securely to the engine. And that's about it for this video. Here's the engine temporarily back in place on the baseboard. You will notice that I haven't cut the baseboard yet, and as it turns out, it needs to be longer than it is. I'm going to increase the length of the baseboard to 18 inches. So really it will be 18 and a half once I put the capping strips around the side. And that's it for this episode. As always, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.